Okay. <clears throat> Uh, good afternoon. I want to stand on this new protocol, but I also need to recognize some people. Uh, first of all, I want to appreciate uh, the invitation extended to me to be part of this event. University of Lagos uh, recently began to change the perspective and our attitude to doing things in the university. <laughs> We are looking greatly for opportunity to interact with industry. So I see this not a personal invitation, but an opportunity for University of Lagos to partner with the uh, association in pushing the industry and university partner forward. So thank you. And also want to appreciate the Honorable Minister who considered it important to provide this opportunity of listening to what government is doing especially with respect to information and, and mass mobilization. So, and then for the excellent delivery by the representative, uh, Honorable Olale Kong. So, the president, the executive council of the association, member of the Advertisement Association of Nigeria, distinguished guests, and also my colleagues from the academics. It's a privilege for me to be here to give the keynote speaker which is really, really usually not in, in the style of academics. We are usually asked to come and give paper to discuss issues, but as much as possible, accept me as I can do this uh, as much I can. So when I know as things are now globally, there are pressures on the advertisement industry, communication industry, because of people are seeing it as where the money lies, revenue, and so on and so forth. So globally, we see that the industry is moving in terms of revenue. Everybody is now going into the sector. Uh, and I want to use a case study uh, of University of Lagos to illustrate this. Uh, recently, there is a publication that ranked university according to employabilities of their students. Uh, University of Lagos was ranked low, and I, in the University of Lagos, I'm director of academy, director of quality assurance and Savicom, and therefore I'm a member of management. So, and that's my unit. And they, I was asked, Femi, what do you have to say about this? I say yes, we should even clamp, clap for ourselves that we are not in other categories. The physician was worried and said, why? And I said, in our, if we did a survey earning and learning. That is, we look at our union like student, how many of our union like students are now having a business they are doing aside others. We discovered that at least more than 65% of our students have their home business themselves. Our University of Lagos recently commissioned a center that incubates around 250 SME among students. When you have a university where they are producing students for the industry immediately, who are not looking for a job, you don't expect the institution whereby you go to a company to come find who are from that where you find our Unilag student in that place. Rather, if you ask for the CEO, then you see more of Unilag as CEO than being a worker. And that's why the issue of employability of University of Lagos is low. So, and what are they doing? That's what concerns here. Many of them are into the content writing into uh, where, um, social media, and that's where they are earning their money. So, the, and you ask them, and you see many of them, they ride good cars and so on and so forth. It means that there are so much money in the industry. And because of that, government as well is currently pushing on revenue drive and looking at the only way that they get more revenue nowadays is from the service sector, and that sector is these unit. So we should expect that government will focus on this industry because of the money that is there and because of the drift towards that. And as we are driven to these sectors, both the good and the bad will come into the sectors and therefore there is need for government to regulate. But what kind of regulation do we need? And how should government regulate? And that's where we have. And what are the consequences of this regulation? So I identify some of these um, consequences. Number one, regulation supposed to reduce uncertainty. But what do we have in Nigeria? It creates more uncertainties. 
And that's where the problem is. When government just wake up one day without informing the industrial players, anybody just introduce a policy and everybody get stopped and you started your planning and you cannot move forward again. So it means regulations are supposed to support a business now becoming a problem to, to the business. Secondly, regulations are supposed to encourage investment into industry. But when a system is over-regulated, then they usually they get stilled and they discourage from industry. And that explains why the regulations currently has been carried out by the government may have to be rethink and then look at ways of making sure it achieves the goal. They are supposed to promote competition. It ought to open the market for everybody. But now, most of regulation is to reduce the, the size of the market and hence may not lead to the desired goals and also to protect consumers. But rather than much of the regulation that we have, if we have advertisement, is even to tax consumers. They tax the producers, they tax the consumers, and definitely, and they tax the operator. At the end of the day, the ultimate goal of providing more goods for more people is also being defeated. More importantly, regulations are supposed to reduce negative externalities, reduce pollutions, but what we observe, those aspects are grossly ignored. And essentially, the ultimate goal of government is to promote economic growth, to, to create more jobs, to provide opportunities, and to provide a secured environment. But when those people who work in the industries are also not being discouraged, they cannot invest, they are not competitive, automatically the economy will shrink, and then all the benefits will go. So what are the consequences, negative consequences of this? Then for industrial players to be able to act effectively, then they bear heavy cost, compliance cost is heavy. And when they add this one to the existing operational cost, then become difficult for them to operate. Then we have barrier to entry. Regulation rather than encouraging entry is not discouraging entry and then reducing the, the space for operations and then increasing at least the people to go under the under the uh, Google, under the world economy to operate and those have the only limitation. And regulation in most cases, cases is anti-market and therefore create inefficiency. And anything that distorts effective market operations and effectiveness automatically will lead into inefficiencies and again can make people to take advantage of regulations to better their own personal gains. And over-regulation is definitely is a result of excessive at least control over the system. Then the purpose of regulation also is supposed to be to allow at least equitable, if not equal, distribution of the benefit. But when government regulate, some people benefit more than the other. And indeed, some being subsidized, and okay, why some being um, given benefit. So, and also this limit job creations and so on and so forth. So what we, and I also want to give an example. Recently, Investor of Lagos opened its platform for advertisement. We have OOH now. That is uh, the open, the out of home advertisement we have screen. Our goal of asking these people to come to the Investor of Lagos is that we want to get information promptly to students uh, across. But we were told in the last presentation was made to us that for everything we want to place in that place, not that the, our uh, operator we get permission that we ourselves, by the new law, requires also to get that permission. So automatically, it affects our ability to use that platform. And then we are worried that, so it means if within the system, we want, we want some information we want to get quickly into our student, then we have to go through process of getting uh, approval for such information to be there. So it means regulations that are supposed to estin productivity and then quick information delivery is becoming another, another delay into, into that. So what I suggest, and I believe that the other speakers will provide a detailed explanation of this. So number one, I feel that if you really want to regulate, we should regulate a system that exists. An existence that exists must have a guideline and a framework. And there must be policy guideline with respect to that. When we do not have a well structured policy, then again it's difficult for us to have a regulation that promote efficiency. So I want the, the operator to and then the government 
to have a dialogue with the industry and engage them, not after, even not when the process, the process is gone, before at all the process starts. So it must be from the bottom up, not from top bottom, that most regulations are supposed to come from the industry and government will just legislate on those consensus that they have. Then again, we need to build capacity. Capacity in terms of those people who are going to regulate. We have overseas regulators who rather than do the things they have to be done according to the law, where they go beyond what's supposed to be done, and that creates a lot of distortion in the system. So we need to build that capacity. Then there should be serious effort to ensure that it's transparency and accountability. We know what it means. What some people are just waiting for is for government to make a law and give them uniform. Once they have that, they become the king and then the lord over everybody. You see them destroying properties just because they are given power to regulate. And most cases, the activities are not usually transparent. So we also need to build a culture of corporate governance, even in government, where we comply with our rules. If you state that this is going to be the rules, then both the regulators and the operators must keep to those rules. Not that you expect the operators to keep to the rules and you violate the rules at will. And because you are the one that holds at least even the court, the security as well, then you make it difficult for the operators to comply with that and then you feel discouraged. And the overall consequence is this, is the negative image we have in Nigeria. And that's the role that these organizations need to play. And I ask a question, if they ask us, how do the world, even ourselves, perceive Nigeria? One, Nigeria is most corrupt in the world. Number two, Nigeria is the capital city of poverty. Yet, globally today, every known company in the world wants to come to Nigeria to invest. If we are poor, can we be able to buy those materials? Can we be able to do that? So it means that, one, because government is not engaging industry professionals to market Nigeria, then those who, have, who are doing freelancing, then, and they know from negative news, they get more revenue than positive news. And therefore, they dish out negative news that give them their own personal gains, whereas professionals who are trained, who want to comply with the rules, are neglected in this respect. So government need to partner with organizations like this to ensure that at least the standards that they set are met and then we, are, we partner in promoting the image of Nigeria. I want to wish all of us a good afternoon today, and we hope that the other presenters will provide more detail to this discussion. Thank you, and God bless you.